Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. So today I'm going to be painting Picking the Perfect Tree and I'm going to be sipping on my coffee and if you enjoy this process I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're going to find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. Alright, so for my materials today, I'm going to be using a stretched and prime 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting a lawn, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm going to be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, ultramarine blue, Mars black, fluorescent orange, fire red, chrome yellow, burnt umber, which I'll call brown, and green oxide. And of course you can switch up those colors if you'd like to as well, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a standard number two pencil, and then I have three brushes. I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a number 10 round synthetic brush, and I have a number two round synthetic brush. And I will refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process. And of course, you can switch those up as well. If you're painting along with me, you'll probably wanna have a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources that can help you through your painting process. One of them is a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the large canvas. I'll even throw in the pencil for you. Same kind of paint, all that good stuff. So that's down there for you. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we're gonna be drawing an outline of our hills. I'm gonna be using my pencil. I'll give you a couple of markers and then we'll just connect the dots and by the time we're done, we'll have a couple of roly-poly hills. You could certainly model yours after whatever kind of hills that you want. You could even do mountains or have fun with it if you'd like or just follow along with me. So on the right hand side, I'm gonna be making myself a marker about halfway up or down that canvas and it doesn't again have to be exactly where mine is just somewhere in that vicinity over on the left hand side if this is my halfway point i'm coming down about an inch from that making myself a marker and then i'm going to come down maybe about another inch and a half to two inches make myself a third marker i'm going to connect this mark to this mark over here with a roly-poly kind of hill. I go up a little bit and then I'm just gonna kind of slope it back down, something like this, and then just bring it in towards here. Then about halfway into my canvas, I'm going to make myself another mark and I'll connect this to here. And this will be with whatever type of little hill kind of mark that you would like. I'm gonna just kind of bring it in through here. And that's all I'm gonna do for that step. We're gonna be utilizing our large brush for the next step so you can do any adjustments that you'd like and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint our sky. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush and I'm gonna be using black, blue, and white. And how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna be doing a left to right brush stroke. I'm gonna have my sky dark at the top and light as I get down towards the bottom. So I'm gonna start with blue and black on my brush at the same time, about equal parts of both. The black will very easily take over, so you may not need to load it onto your brush at all after you do this first round. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna pick up blue. I'm not gonna pick up any more black. And what'll happen is that black will naturally work its way off of my brush, providing me with a natural gradient as I come down the sky. So right now, again, I'm just picking up blue paint to come down my sky, and in a minute, I will start introducing white so the sky will get even lighter as it reaches those um, down by the hills. So 
as I come in through here, just kind of going left and right. And you can see I had a little dark spot there that was some of that black being released from my brush. So that will happen. And of course, that's going to make it look even more natural. So at this point, I'm going to start picking up a little bit of white, not a lot, and then more blue. So I put a tiny bit of white on my brush and then I scooped up more blue. So I have blue and white on my brush right now. And this is going to start the transition into the lighter sky as it goes down towards that horizon. So as I transition into these lighter areas, I what I tend to do is I put my lighter color on and then I work my way back up into the previous section. So what will happen is I am creating or allowing these two different colors to kind of blend in together. Right now, I think I'm just gonna pick up white paint to finish up the bottom of this sky here and uh, with my dirty brush. So I have a, a dirty brush that I'm adding just white paint to, and that's gonna allow me to get this horizon line to look nice and light. It doesn't have to go all the way white. We actually want it to be a little bit darker than white so it doesn't compete with our, our snow on our hills that we're gonna be putting in a little while. So I'm just making sure that I'm, I'm continuing to use that left to right brush stroke. Even as I'm hitting these hills, I do wanna try and continue to have a left to right brush stroke and not a sky that looks like it's um, kind of going around the hills. Just keep that left to right brush stroke and that'll make it look nice and natural. And if you wanted to, you could certainly do a second coat on your sky if you wanted it to be smoother or have a more, you know, subtle gradient to it, feel free to do that. And whenever you're ready, you can wash and dry this large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are painting our hills. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm using are white, brown, and black. And how I'm gonna do this is I'm in essence gonna be painting gray snow that's lighter at the top of each hill and darker at the bottom. So that way, when I wanna go and put my fluffy snow on later to make sure that it's got some good dimension, I have this darker snow underneath to help me out with that. Plus, it's a nighttime scenery, so it doesn't have to be white, white snow. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start with white, a little bit of brown, and just a teeny tiny bit of black on my brush. And I'm going to be, in essence, kind of rubbing or scrubbing it onto the, the hill. I want to have some light areas and dark areas, uh, so that's why I'm not pre-mixing myself a color. And then as I get down towards the bottom of the hill, I dip my brush a little bit in the brown and the black, and I'm gonna get it to go even darker at the bottom of the hill. So that way, it alludes to that hill just kind of rolling down and it's getting a little bit darker and darker as it's getting farther and farther away from the sky in essence. So I'm gonna do the same thing for this hill, but of course I'm gonna use much more paint. So I've got brown, I got mostly white, a little bit of brown and a, and a touch of black on my brush. And I'm just really gonna be scrubbing it on here. I don't need a perfect coat. I do want it to go all the way up to um, cross over into my sky so that way it ends up overlapping the sky a little bit and we don't have any unpainted canvas between the sky and the hill. And same thing over here, just making sure that I get it all the way up to that other hill. I've got a light combination of colors on my brush right now, so I'm just kind of rolling with it as they were uh, making their way off of my brush. And the trick here is to just not make it look like you have sections of color or like distinct sections of color. So you want all of these areas to just kind of blend in with one another. You can have it a little bit lighter up at the top. I'm gonna go pretty darn dark as I get towards the bottom of this hill, but right now just kind of getting this snow on here in an uneven kind of fashion. So that way it um, looks like it's got some good dimension in it when I go to add that fluffy snow on top of it. And you could use blue in your mixture too. That would make it look cooler. The um, I just added brown and black to my brush to get down towards the bottom of here and I'll get it to blend in. 
when you utilize blue in snow, that's going to make it look colder. So if you really want this to look like a super duper cold, frigid type of um, landscape, you can certainly use a little bit of blue on it. I'm going for a more subtle ground because I want the star of the show to be my trees. So I'm just going to, I'm just making mine a little bit more on the neutral side with this um, gray type of warm gray that I'm using with that brown mixture in it. And again, I'm using quite a bit of black down at the bottom here so I can get it to be nice and dark. And then I'm just gonna get it to blend in as it's going up so it gets lighter and lighter towards the top, but I didn't go all the way white up towards the top. And we are going to be utilizing the same brush for the next step. So once you've got this layer of the ground on here, you've got your snow all nice and formulated here, you can wash and dry this big brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint ourselves some stars. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. You could utilize a bristle brush, you could use a toothbrush, you could use your medium brush and make a ton of little speckle dots, but I'm gonna use this and I'm gonna be using like this little flicking type of technique. So I'm gonna get dirty, so are things around me. <laughs> so when you go to do this, if you don't want a whole bunch of, you know, flicked paint everywhere. Just, you know, be mindful of um, how far you flick it. And if you don't want dirty hands, you can wear gloves too. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to first dab my brush in my water and then I pat it on my paper towel and then I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of white paint. You don't need a lot of paint. I'm just putting it on the tip of my brush and I don't need a lot of water but I like to use a little bit of water so it kind of um, like splays out on me and what I do is I take my fingertip and I'm going to just be flicking it like this you can so you get your process down if you want to practice on a piece of paper you can certainly do that I like to have a million little stars in the sky, so I'm just gonna kind of keep doing this until I've got as many as I want. Sometimes you might get like a long stringy one if you have, you know, a little bit extra paint in your on your brush or maybe not enough water or, you know, any, any little um, adjustment to the fluidity can make some of those little stringy ones, but roll with it. They can be shooting stars if you get them. And then once you've got as many stars on here as you want, we are going to be utilizing the same brush for the next step. So you can just wash it and dry it and get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be painting our trees. I'm gonna be using my bristle brush and I do wanna forewarn you that before you start this step that you make sure that your canvas is dry. So this is that time where you get to take that extra long break if you'd like to. Or you can find some kind of fun fanning method to get it dry or you can do as I did and just whip out your blow dryer and get it dry that way. So whatever way works best for you. So the colors that I'm gonna be using are black, green, yellow, and white. And I'm going to be placing trees in various size off in the distance as well as in the foreground. But I am going to, when I place my trees, I'm going to be mindful that I want to keep a space somewhere in like this vicinity. This is going to be where I put my um, little person who is going to be dragging the tree. So I want to make sure that I don't put any in through there. You can certainly put yours and your um, child pulling the tree anywhere you want to, but I'm gonna have mine in through here. Just be mindful to keep space for it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to be loading my brush with black paint first. And because I'm using a bristle brush that the bristles sometimes have a mind of their own and splay out, how I'm gonna load my paint is I take it and I squish it in the side. I take my brush and squish it in the paint on the side of my palette. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna bring my bristles together and keep them in control why, when I need them to be in control, which is right now because I'm going to be putting some tree trunks or I call them place markers for where I want my trees. So I'm just going to be putting a whole bunch of vertical lines where I want my trees to be and the height of them and then I'll show you how I'm going to color them in. So on my right hand side, I'm going to have a tree over here on the right side that's going to come almost to the top of my canvas. So I'm about maybe an inch and a half away. 
I'm going to have one in through here. I would say if this is the center of your canvas, you're going to be over maybe about two or three inches. This one's going to be on the horizon line. And I'm going to bring it up a little bit shorter than that one. So I'm just going to give myself a vertical line that's maybe, I don't know, three inches away from the top of my canvas. Then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do another one on this back um, hill. I would say maybe about three or four inches away from the edge and I'm going almost all the way up to the top of my canvas with it. Those are going to be my back three and then I'm going to put one that's in the ground a little bit in through here. So this one's going to be a little bit smaller of one and it's going to be I would say about half the distance from my hill to the top of my canvas. Then I've got another one that's going to come in between these two and it's going to be in this um, land right here. So I'm only going to come about an inch below my hill and as I bring this up I'm going to be a little bit short of this one. Again you can have yours whatever height that you want them to be. And then I'm going to have a huge one coming out in through here. It's going to be a little bit lower than this one so I can bring it a little bit further down. It's about half the distance between these two so somewhere about in through here. And this one's going to be really tall. This is going to be my biggest one. It's going just about up to the top of my canvas. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint my back ones first with just black paint. So I have just black paint on my brush. And the whole idea here, I want them to look like pine trees. So I'm going to be dot, dotting the branches coming out. And I make them a little bit wider as it comes down towards the ground. So you don't have to dot it 100%. We definitely are going to have a million little lights on each tree. But the uh, main goal is to kind of keep it looking like a long triangle. So I'm going to do my back ones first. This one's a back one as well. And I try and keep it nice and pointy up at the top. So that way it gives you that that look of being a pine tree. As I come down towards the ground, I'm just going to kind of dot it along the bottom. So it we're going to have snow that's going to be coming down at the bottom and kind of skirting around the bottom of the tree so we don't have to worry about how beautiful that looks. And these back trees, we're going to have the front trees are going to kind of overlap them a little bit, which is why we're doing the back ones just in black. Um, so when we do the front ones, we'll have a little bit of diversity in those colors. I'm doing this one kind of on the more slender side, but you could certainly have yours wide or skinny, whatever, whatever works for you visually is totally fine. Um, this is just going to work for me when I go to do that front tree. You'll be able to see a lot of the difference between the two of them. So I've got this one coming all the way down to the ground. And don't worry how perfect it is at the ground. Again, we'll be utilizing um, snow to cover the bottom of that. So now I'm going to go ahead and tackle my bigger trees. So when I do my bigger trees or my front trees, I'm going to be using black and green. So I am going to utilize, I'm going to take black and I'll do some of it with black, then I'm going to pick up green and do some of it with green. So what's going to happen is you're going to have light spots and dark spots and because we're going to be using green it will allow for a beautiful diversity in the colors as um, as it dries. So I'm going to pick up green now and now I'm going to start doing some of this in green and you can overlap the areas just all the while you want to kind of maintain that you're um, keeping it in that long kind of triangular type of shape. If you want it to look a little bit more natural you'll want to have those edges kind of maybe one sticks out a little bit different than the other one and I'm really just using a dotting type of technique. You could certainly use a fancier kind of technique if you want to but I like to kind of keep it simple I know again I'm going to be having a thousand lights on here I do want to make sure that I leave some black spots um, so that way it looks like there's some good uh, dimension within the tree and what's going to happen with the green is the thicker the green is when it dries those will be your brighter spots so it will naturally give you a bunch of diversity because of the thickness and thinness of the of the 
green paint on top of the black or in conjunction with the black. So you don't have to really try hard to get a lot of dimension on the tree, provided you don't sit here and dot it over and over and over again. If you, if you dot it a thousand times in the same spot, what you're gonna do is blend it all together and it will look like one solid color. So you just have to kind of control your excitedness when you're painting. So don't dot it a thousand times, just kind of dot it a little bit and move on to the next tree. So I'm gonna pick up some black paint I'm going to do this little guy over in through here. I'm kind of waiting a minute for these two trees to dry a little bit because I know this one might come in front of them. So I'm giving that one a minute. I just picked up a little bit of black so I can start this tree over here. This one's going to be a cute little baby tree. I'm seeing a lot of green on my brush right now, so I think I need to clean my brush a little bit. So just giving it a good squeeze in my paper towel just because I know I want to have that uh, diversity in the colors. So if you're seeing too much green coming out of the gate when you really want black, then that means you've got too much green on your brush. And then I just picked up green to kind of fill in some of these areas and give myself that diversity in color where I want to have um, some green spots and some black spots, but I'm not overdoing it. And then I'll go ahead and do this last tree. And knowing what I know from this one that I needed to wipe it off on my paper towel. So I wiped it off on my paper towel, picking up some black paint to start giving myself some, some a base here or just, you know, kind of a, a starting point. I don't want this to go very far into this land here. So I think I'm gonna bring it maybe out to there and maybe, that looks about good to me. And just getting a little bit of black on here. I will pick up the green in it right now. So I just picked up some green on my dirty brush and I'm gonna go ahead and intermingle this. I'm gonna get this to kind of come in front of this corner of this little tree here and just kind of dabbing it throughout the rest of the tree. I'll probably pick up a little bit of black in a minute too. And I'm just kind of using the, the side or you know the edge of my brush to get these branches on. And to me, they represent wintertime um, pine trees. And typically from where I live, uh, winter pine trees, the branches lay down because of the weight of the snow. So that's why I'm getting mine to look like they're kind of coming down. And then I have one more tree to go, which is gonna be the one that our child is pulling. So once I've got this one done, I feel like that's pretty good. I don't wanna overdo my dotting. So I think that that's pretty good. I'm actually gonna wash. No, nah, I'll just wipe it on my paper towel. I don't really need to wash it. And then I'm gonna put one laying down in through here. So this one, or being pulled. My little person is gonna be right in through here. So I really just kind of want a kind of, uh, like a round type of edge here, and it's just gonna come to a point or kind of come off of the canvas in through here. So I'm gonna start with a little bit of black just to give myself the, the shape of what I want. So I'm just gonna kind of dot this in through here. Maybe this comes over and then in my head, it's gonna just kind of come down and off of my canvas in through this direction. And I want my ruffled edges. I mean, this is a tree that's looking like it's laying down, so I don't really need to do a whole heck of a lot. I just picked up the green color, and I'm gonna put some green on here too, maybe a couple of little branches sticking out here and there. And I do, I'm gonna be putting a lighter green on in a minute. That's where the, um, I had mentioned that we were gonna use yellow and white as well. We're gonna create a lighter green color here in a second, but first I'm getting these under branches on here. And I'm just in my head, I'm saying, okay, it's laying down. The branches might be kind of um, being pulled this way. So I'm just, that's where my, my brush is moving. I'm just gonna move it in that direction. So I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and create a lighter green color. This light green color I will most likely use later for lights on the trees. So I just washed and dried my brush. I'm gonna take a little bit of green and add it to some of my yellow in through here. And then I'm gonna add a tiny bit of white paint. So I'm just getting myself a light green color like this. And I'm gonna dab this right on the top 
edge of some of these branches. So you don't need much. I'm really just giving a little illusion here. And if yours is blending too much, you can always come back later after the base coat has dried and add these bits of highlights on top later. So don't feel like if it's not working out for you right now that that it's not going to work out. Sometimes just when we're when we're layering on colors like this, sometimes we need that undercoat to just dry a little bit. And all I'm doing is adding a little bit of highlight in through there, maybe a touch over on this side, and then we are going to be utilizing our medium brush. Mm. Yeah, let's use our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put your large brush away, take out your medium brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna put lights on our trees. So I'm using my medium brush, and I'm gonna use a whole bunch of colors. You could certainly do yours all the same color, or you can, you know, switch it up into whatever is sparkly and exciting to you. But I'm gonna be using the colors that we have on our palette. I'm gonna be doing each tree in kind of a different color combination. So I'm gonna start with that light green that we had created for here, for this tree down here. And I'm going to be putting really just polka dots, <laughs> sporadic polka dots throughout every tree that I want this light green to be represented. I'm using my medium brush and I'm using a lot of paint so I can just kind of quickly go through and dab on a whole bunch of lights in different sizes. I like to put some of them outside of the tree's edge so that way it almost at a quick glance looks like there's just some that are sparkling along the edges and I put tons of them in my trees so you can certainly feel free to put as many or as few as you want. I think I'm going to have some in this tree back here too of this same color so I'm going to go ahead and just kind of add a few back here and then what I like to do is I'm going to whatever color I have on my brush I'm going to put that in as many trees as I want to before I switch colors so that way it kind of expedites my process and I don't have to wash and dry my brush more than necessary. So now that I've got my light green on as many trees as I want, I'm gonna actually just wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna go in for my next color that I want. So I think I'm gonna go in for some red. So I'm just picking up red paint. I think I want some red in this tree over here. And again, you could certainly utilize any color scheme that you wanted to. You could have all of your trees having a similar um, type of color scheme from one to another. I've had people do this painting. I think I'm going to have red in this one too. I've had people do this painting with very organized um, ornaments and like garland type of stripes for their um, lights. So feel free as you're going through this process, if you want yours to be, um, ha you know, maybe resemble the, the holiday tree that is in your house every year or you had as a child, feel free to you know explore those options. I'm gonna wash my brush now. I'm going in for my next color, which is gonna be my fluorescent orange. So fluorescent orange, I know is gonna be very see-through. So when I'm doing this, I am definitely using a lot of paint on my brush and I'm making my dots pretty heavy. Um, with the with the quantity of paint you might find that after it dries that you might want to come in with another layer on top of some of these colors if they don't dry vibrant enough for you i'm going to put some on this tree too um, and or you can utilize a little bit of white in your paint mixture but i'm going to i'm going to show you how that white plays out when we get to our yellow twinkling lights but you could certainly for something like this vibrant orange if you wanted it to be even brighter you could certainly use it with a little bit of white or um, again put a couple of different layers on it the thicker it is the more vibrant it's going to be especially sitting on that black i'm washing and drying my brush again i'm going to go in for my next color so my next color i i think i want like a light blue color so i'm going to be oops i'm going to take my ultramarine blue 
blue and I'm going to add some white to it so I get a light blue color. You could certainly make like a light, um, like a teal kind of color if you wanted to add a little bit of green to or a little bit of yellow to this mixture but I'm just going to go for light blue and I think I'm going to have some light blue lights over here on this tree and don't worry about hitting another light you could you know they can certainly overlap and twinkle together and you know intermingle with one another so feel free to to have fun with the quantity of lights you can see I just really am very carefree with how I do this if I if I feel that my light um, is not of a dot and it just splays out that means that I'm probably pushing too hard with my brush and I might not have enough paint on my brush so I reload often so I have a good amount of paint on the tip of my brush and then I just kind of keep going and dot as many as I want until it makes me happy <laughs> but you can certainly again make yours more minimal than mine or more exciting than mine I think I'm going to put some light blue ones on this tree back here as well and this is where you just feel out your own visual preference if you want to have lots and lots of you know similar style lights you know maybe your lights end up being way more you know twinkly and organized than mine are I do go in I don't my hands probably get in the way a lot because I go kind of straight in with my brush as opposed to dabbing it from the side this will give me a more circular kind of brush stroke or a uh, circular mark on my tree I'm going to wash and dry my brush again. I'm going to go in for some light yellow. So I want, this is where the white is going to play. Is, I'll teach you a little bit about the white. So if I was just to use this yellow on top of my black, you can see it now when it's wet, but when it dries, it's going to be a lot darker and it might turn on a to take on a greenish hue because it's on that black. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of white and mix it with some of my yellow. I don't want to make my yellow much different in color, but that white is going to help it be not so see-through. So that's going to help me to make my yellow on the, on the lights of the tree brighter. So I'm going to put some in through here. And of course, you can add them to whatever trees that you want. You can have them big or small or, you know, so real systematic and just, you know, little tiny twinkles here and there. That's going to be totally up to you. You could even utilize your tiny brush to do these lights. It all depends on, again, what is visually appealing for you. I like mine to just be nice and bold and big and sparkly and stuff, but you might want yours different than mine. I'm going to put some of these yellow ones over in here as well. I just need to reload my brush here, giving myself a nice pointy tip with a lot of paint on it. And again, if it starts to intermingle with your other colors, that's awesome. It's just going to look like they're all twinkling together and that they're making a, a nice happy tree that has lots of holiday flair on it and bright lights sparkling. I think I'm going to put some yellow ones on here too. So yellow for me is a real, you know, vibrant, alive kind of color. So I am incorporating it in many of my trees. And if you pick one color and um, kind of have it transcend through a lot of your trees, that will also give harmony throughout the, the color scheme if you want them to, to look like maybe the same person decorated them or for them to have a little bit of, of you know, symmetry to them, you can certainly take these colors and just kind of incorporate them everywhere. So now I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and I am going to be adding some white twinkle lights. So I'm just picking up white. So this could be resemble some snow. It could resemble a little white twinkly lights. It can be whatever you feel that, you know, you want it to represent. So I'm just going to kind of take a little, oops, that was just a lot of paint on my brush. Um, I'm going to take a little bit of white and just kind of, I'm going to put a little bit in each tree. So that way I've got that extra bit of little sparkle 
throughout my trees. And again, you can make these large or small. You can have them look like maybe this white is representational of snow or sparkly lights. Whatever, you know, again, you're visually seeing in your head will totally work. And I, again, love to put tons and tons. So as I'm going with this white, if I feel like overlapping and bumping into other um, lights that's totally fine you can put as many on here as you want the more the more the merrier when it comes to holiday lights on your on your trees the only one I'm not putting them on is the one that is has just been plucked from the forest and is going to make its way into this child's holiday home but I'm going to put them on all these ones that are in our forest and that are are sparkling in the nights in the night's light and then once you've got all of your beautiful lights on your trees we're going to be utilizing our large brush for the next step so I'm just getting these last couple on here and then I'm going to put this medium brush away wherever I want to I'll take out my large brush and I'm going to get ready for the next step All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're painting the fluffy snow on the ground. So when I do snow, I really like it to feel like thick and like it's soft and there's lots of dimension to it. So that's why I kind of started with a darker base. I'm gonna put a little bit of lighter snow that it's gonna look like it's kind of piled up maybe at the bottom of some of these trees um, and maybe at, at the tippy top of this hill and just kind of get everything to look like it's not just stuck on there or like two-dimensional. I want that snow to look a little three-dimensional. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my large brush, I'm going to pick up a little bit of white, and I just rub it on the side of my palette. I don't need a lot. The idea here is to have a bright area where the snow is piled up and then it dissipates into the darker area around. So I definitely want some bright stuff up here at the top. Make sure this tree doesn't look like it's floating, which it does right now. It did before I added this on here. And then I'm just kind of rubbing it and then I just let my brush kind of run out of paint. So what this is going to do is it's going to give you that fluffy look at the top and then it's going to allow it to just kind of transcend into those darker areas. If you wanted little other little pops of, of brightness, you can certainly put them in. The only trick to this is you don't want it to look like you're painting around that tree. So if you have to bump into that tree, you can always come back and put little branches on top of it if you need to, but you don't want to have like a big dark section around the left and the right of the tree. Um, if you're putting light snow up here, bring it all the way or just make it blend in a little bit. So I'm going to pick up a little bit more of white paint, make sure that I've got enough fluffy stuff at the top of this hill in through here. And you might not need to do anything. Maybe yours looks totally awesome the way that it is. Oh, I just ran into a little bit of wet orange. So this is going to actually look like it's um, reflecting on my snow, which is really kind of cool. I might do that to all of them. Maybe, maybe not. We're going to let the, uh, let's see what that plays out to be. I might, I might come back and put snow on top of it, but I just washed and dried my brush to get that orange off. I'm going to pick up a little bit more white paint. I'm going to put some um, brighter snow underneath this tree in through here. So this is also going to make it look like there's a shadow underneath that tree. If I put a little bit of brightness on the snow that is just outside of the tree. So that helps to give that little bit of dimensional element to it. And you can, of course, pile your snow up as high as you want. Maybe we've got a little pile in through here, and maybe this just kind of comes around the side in through there. And I'm just going to kind of get it to rub out. Maybe this is a little bit of a hill in through here with this little pile of snow. And again, I just really want it to look nice and natural, so I want all of this stuff to kind of just dissipate. Um, I do want to keep maybe this area around this tree a little bit darker as if it was being dragged and it's just got a little shadow underneath there, but I want to have some lightness at the bottom of this tree. So I'm just going to kind of put little piles of snow in through here and you don't need to do much. It's just, you're giving the viewer the illusion that we've got little piles of snow here and there that maybe have been untouched and they're just taking on that 
you know, that little piled look they've accumulated, the little bits of snow have accumulated around the bottoms of the trees, and then it's, you know, just kind of dissipating down the hill. And you can certainly, you know, have fun with playing with this as much as you want to. I think I'm going to put a little bit more white in through here. Let's see if we can get those that glow from those lights to disappear a little bit and then we are going to be utilizing our small brush for the next step so once you've got all of your beautiful snow nice and piled up and you can see again I didn't do a whole heck of a lot you could certainly play with yours even more if you wanted to but uh, less is more in my book when you're you know when you're adding these you know bits of accents to um, a particular landscape like this so just make it look like it's all nice and finished and you've got some light spots and some dark spots and it all works together and then you can put this large brush away wherever you'd like to take out your small brush and get ready for the next step All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to be painting twinkly stars. <laughs> so I'm going to use my small brush. I'm only going to have two twinkly stars, but you can have as many as you want. I'm going to have one big, huge one on, sitting on top of this tree, and then I'll have one off in the distance over here. So how I'm going to do this is I'm going to start with just yellow paint. I did have some mixed with a little bit of the white and if you if that's all you have then you can certainly use that but if you have some that's not mixed with the white paint that would be more translucent which is where I'm kind of headed for a glow that's going to um, be created by this twinkly star so I have just yellow paint on my brush and I'm going to take it and I am pulling it out from the top of my tree and I'm pulling it out in all directions. So again, I know that this is gonna be very translucent when it dries. So this is just providing me with what's gonna to appear to be the glow from the star that sits upon this tree. And of course, you don't have to have one sitting on top of the tree. If you don't want to, you can just have some in the sky. You can really, you know, use your own holiday imagination to um, create the appearance of, you know, maybe you have an angel sitting on top of your tree. Maybe, you know, you have nothing sitting on top of your tree. It's totally up to you. So I'm just starting with this yellow glow. Once I have my yellow glow in place, I'm going to kind of let this sit for a minute and we're going to go to the other star over on the other side of the canvas and get that in place. And then we'll come back to this one and put the center. So I'm just going to wipe my brush off on my paper towel. And for the other one, I'm not really going to have much of a glow around it. So this one's just going to be way off in the distance. When I do these little sparkle stars, what I like to do is I'm going to start with a little bit of white paint on my brush. You can even start with a little bit of white paint with a, a touch of water. And I'm going to create a, just a little circle. And then what I do is I pull out these little um, streams or beams of light from that center. So if you have a small brush that really helps out and if you put a little bit of water on your brush that's going to give you those little tiny skinny lines and if it, if it goes wrong you can always just you know either use your background color or use a bit of water to kind of back it off a little bit i just added a bit more white paint to make sure my center is bright enough or as bright as i want it to be and that's all i'm going to do for that one so now I'm going to come back over to this one and it's pretty much dry because I didn't use a lot of paint. I'm going to be using white paint to, in essence, kind of repeat what I did for that little one off to the right. So I'm going to do my center and then I don't want to have too much paint. So I'm going to just wipe it off on my paper towel and then I'm just going to start pulling this out in various directions. So you can use a little bit of yellow too to build this into a really bright kind of um, star of sorts, but I'm just kind of starting with the white. We did the yellow behind it. You can certainly, um, you know, utilize as, as make it as bright as you want, but right now just taking that white and pulling it out from the center. So that's going to give me that burst of light that is um, 
that's the way that I want it. And then I pick up a tiny bit of white paint just to re-brighten that center. And then I would suggest, you know, you just let it dry for a minute and see if you want to add any more vibrancy to it. Sometimes when it dries, especially on a, a, on a dark background like this, you might find that you want to keep adding to those layers to get it as bright as you want it. Um, and letting it dry will help you to see if it's going to end up as bright as you want it. And if it's not, you just kind of keep adding to the layers of it. And then we are going to be utilizing this same small brush for the next step. So once you've got your beautiful twinkle stars in place, you can wash and dry your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing the base coat of our kid that's dragging the tree. I'm gonna be using my small brush and I'm gonna be using brown and blue paint on my brush at the same time through the whole process. So this way it's gonna give us a nice neutral type of color for our base coat. So I'm gonna load my brush with blue and brown at the same time. I'm gonna have my, I'm gonna give, we're gonna start with kind of like a stick figure and then just build it from there. So I want my, the center of my kid's body to be a little bit to the left of the right edge of my tree. So if this is my right edge, I'm gonna come in maybe about an inch or so and just kind of make myself a little bit of a marker. And then I'm gonna go straight up from that. I want mine to be just below this tree, the tippy top of the hat. And then I'm just gonna kind of connect those two markers just to have myself a base starting point for the body. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to come down from this tippy top part, I would say maybe about an inch, inch and a half, somewhere in this vicinity. I'm gonna give myself the width of what's gonna be the shoulders, and then I'm going to just keep reloading my brush. <laughs> I'm gonna give myself an arm that's gonna come out in this direction in through here and it doesn't have to be perfect we're just giving a little stick figure at this point with a little at this i'm going to put a um a hand is going to come down in this direction as well so this is just maybe about a half of an inch and that's maybe about three inches or so now i can start building my little person here so from the shoulders my shoulders are right now probably almost an inch wide, something like that. I'm gonna just bring this down in a rectangle type of shape. Maybe this right side has a little bit more um, movement. Maybe there's a little waist there and maybe the jacket kind of kicks out a little bit here. And I'm just gonna color it in. Again, it doesn't have to be anything perfect at this point. We're just giving ourselves some type of shape that is going to work for, um, this little person carrying or dragging the um, the tree. Then I'm gonna give an arm coming out this left-hand side. So from the shoulder, I'm just bringing out a kind of a ripply type of sleeve, and I'm just gonna color this in because to me, this is all gonna be hidden behind um, the, the tree. We'll put a little shadow and stuff in through there in a bit, but right now just kind of giving ourselves a shape. In through here, I'm gonna put the the other sleeve. So this I don't want to be a totally straight line. So I do kind of give it some little ripples along the edge to give my myself a nice thick sleeve of sorts. And then this bottom edge, again, I just keep on picking up the blue and the brown. So you're gonna notice sometimes it looks a little bit more brown. Sometimes it looks a little bit more blue. This is gonna be the inside of the sleeve. And then I've got a big, huge mitten coming down here. We gotta make sure his hands or her hands are nice and warm as he's in or as they're uh, gathering their tree. And then I just need to put the head on here. So I'm gonna have a scarf around the neck and then a hat. So my hat, the little pom-pom part is gonna start up in this direction. So just a little tiny circle in through there. Then I'm gonna put um, the 
a couple of kind of tiers of the hat. I guess that's going to be where the head is going to go. And then there's a big bulky part down at the, um, at the bottom part of it, something like this. And of course you could certainly form your hat, whatever way that you want. And then I'll have, um, a scarf that's going to come out on the edge. So I'm just going to bump out a little piece over here for the scarf. And then you can certainly sit and modify or adjust yours as much as you want. We will be using the same small brush for the next step. So once you've got your body in shape here, do any adjusting that you feel is necessary. And I might pull, I might widen the body a little bit. I feel like my arm is a, is a bit big. So I'm going to just widen this, uh, the body a little bit to make up for that. And then just bring all of this out just a smudge and that's the you know that's something that we play with as as painters as we're doing this it's like hmm does that look right well that looks a little bit too big so you just kind of sit and fiddle and tweak it until you get it into the shape that you want and that looks much better and then we're going to use the same brush for the next step so you can just wash it and dry it and get ready All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish our kid. I'm gonna be using my small brush. The colors I'm using are blue, black, white. If I wanna use any other colors, I'll let you know. You could certainly make your jacket whatever color you want, mittens whatever color, scarf whatever color you want, but I'm just going for something that's not too overpowering. I really like the sparkle of the tree, so this is just gonna be nice and subtle. So I'm gonna start with a little bit of black paint on my brush and I'm gonna put some shadowy kind of darkness in throughout here. So I definitely want there to be um, some kind of shadow underneath the backside of this sleeve and in towards um, where it's going into the tree and down in through here. So you might find during this process that you either want to bring your tree up or you have any kind of little modifications that you want to, to make that's totally fine. I'm gonna have a scarf on the back of the neck, so I'm gonna put a little bit of a black shadow underneath where, where that scarf is going to make its appearance. So some somewhere in through there. I'm gonna have, um, I wanna have some shadow on the bottom side of this sleeve in through here. And you can see I'm not doing straight lines. I'm really trying to just keep the wrinkles and the movement of um, this clothing to look kind of natural. I'm going to have darkness on the bottom side of this mitten in through here. I know that, you know, we've got light on the other side from all of these trees. So I'm just, I'm just having fun with, with, you know, these light sketcherly kind of brush strokes. On the hat, I want to give it a little bit of dimension. So I'm going to put a little bit of black paint over here on this left hand side. Again, I'm going to have a scarf in through here so just utilizing the black to kind of show the the form of the hat so a little bit on this left hand side maybe in between that pom-pom and keeping some of that lightness on the right hand side so the black for me is you know adding these shadowy type of areas I'm just gonna wipe my brush off on my paper towel pick up some of my blue and this is where I'm gonna kind of give the color of the um, of the jacket or of the clothing so just adding a bit more blue onto here maybe maybe a little bit of blue and a touch of white if you want it to look a little bit more evident that there's blue on there maybe a little bit of uh, the sleeve is coming down in this direction and again just trying to keep the movement of that clothing not doing a whole heck of a lot just making sure that I have a nice color to it and you know some good dimensional elements to it and maybe it's being lit up by the twinkle in the in the night sky so we're seeing some of that blue I'm gonna put a little bit more blue on the hat itself so I'm just pulling it from the right hand side of that hat so we can add that you know really almost like a royal blue kind of color to it if you wanted to, you can certainly add more on the sleeve. And then I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. I'm gonna pick up some white paint to add my scarf onto here. So I know that I have a darker base underneath, so that will help me if I want there to be little um, like light spots and dark spots in my, in my scarf. So I'm just gonna kind of give myself the shape 
of my scarf in through here and I don't need it to be super duper white. I just want you to, the viewer to understand that, you know, there's a different kind of piece of clothing on that neck piece that's maybe keeping this little person nice and warm. And then maybe, maybe a little bit on this little highlight on the inside of the mitten, just to show that it's maybe getting spark, a little bit of light from the other side with the, um, with the lights and you can of course have fun with adding little highlights along the edges that'll tell the viewer that you know he's catching a little bit of the light from the from the tr from the neighboring tree and then we are going to be utilizing the same brush for the next step so once you've got your little person all nice and completed you can wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I usually sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I'm gonna be signing mine with my small brush. I think I'm gonna sign this in the bottom left with black paint. I do my initials, but you could certainly do your first name or the date or a symbol or whatever you'd like for your identifying mark to be. It's your painting, you sign it however you'd like to. And that's gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a very festive holiday image and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.